If you read Genesis, it mentions the existence of Philistines interacting with the patriarchs. However, it's widely known based on archaeological data that the ethnic group known as the Philistines did not migrate to Canaan until around 1200 BC. Thus, Genesis is assumed to be in error when it mentions the Philistines in the land during the days of Isaac back in the Middle Bronze Age too. But perhaps we need to look at what the biblical authors mean by the term Philistine, and if there's any Bronze Age evidence for their existence. Before we get to the Philistines, it's important to note it is impossible to deny that there are updated place names and people groups in Genesis, which even conservative scholars accept. Genesis 11.28 says Abram went out from Ur of the Chaldeans. It's generally agreed upon that the Chaldeans did not exist in the region of Sumer during the Middle Bronze Age, and it's plausible a later author updated the text to help a later audience by adding in a reference to the Chaldeans. Genesis 14 says Abram went into the land of Dan, but no one would have called it Dan back then because Abraham's great-grandson did not exist yet. Genesis 47 says that Jacob and his family settled in the land of Ramesses. There are no texts which indicate this area of Egypt was called the land of Ramesses during the second intermediate period and was most likely only associated with the name Ramesses during the 19th dynasty. Abraham's own name is probably also a later Hebrewized form of an earlier Middle Bronze Age name. The name Abimelech might be a Hebrewized form of a name that shows up in the Amarna letters. So updated language with regards to people groups and city names was not uncommon, and we explained that biblical texts would be expected to be updated in a video on how biblical texts were written. We can see this happening in an Egyptian work called the Tale of Senua, where the later 13th century version has updated language and place names, even though the original work dates back to the Middle Kingdom. So for starters, it is plausible the word Philistine is a later designation for people who live in the land of the Philistines, similar to the other examples in Genesis. Second, just like today, there are multiple ways of identifying people. For example, you could identify me by my ethnicity of being Scotch-Irish, or my nationality and call me an American, or where I currently live and call me a Tucsonan, or by my birthplace and call me a Pittsburgher. If we were to talk of Native American tribes that existed here 500 years ago, it would not be anachronistic to call them Native Americans, even though there technically were no Americans yet. No one living here called themselves an American 500 years ago. The European settlers, who were the first people to call themselves Americans, had not migrated to the region or established the nation of the United States of America. Yet no one would attack a historian and say they made an historical blunder for calling the indigenous people here Americans before the colonists arrived. In the ancient world, people could be identified by their land and often were more so than their ethnicity. Kurt Lesher Knoll says, the ancient label Canaanite was not an ethnic designation or a means of personal identity. In the ancient text, Canaan was a geographic term designating very roughly the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea. As a result, many ancient documents define a Canaanite as anyone who lived in the land of Canaan, regardless of ethnic background. So just like the term American today can mean anyone living in America before or after the nation was established, the ancient term Canaanite referred to anyone living in Canaan and did not necessarily refer to an ethnicity. We can see something similar with the term Amorite. The Sumerian term for Amorite meant Westerner, and they seem to have equated several people migrating from the West as Amorites. Mark Chavela says, It appears that the Amorites were not a people in any ethnic or political sense. The idea that they were social outsiders also appears to be outdated. Porter has proposed that they had social ties to local populations, i.e., mobile herding communities belonging to the same peoples as their settled counterparts. 
Thus, they were not a separate people, but one dimension of a general populace. In the biblical text, Amorite can be equated with Canaanite, suggesting the terms were much looser than we presuppose and didn't necessarily have to refer to distinct ethnicities. However, Philistine might also not necessarily refer to a specific ethnicity, but could signify someone from a general region. Now, when it comes to Genesis, excluding the table of nations, the first time we hear of Philistines is not the people group, but the land of the Philistines. This could just be the same as when Genesis 14 identifies a region as Dan, or when Genesis 47 identifies Goshen as the land of Ramesses. These are updated place names for a later audience. Just like how the updated version of the Tale of Senua changes the older location of Kadem with an updated name Kadesh. Or like how we could say the Dutch founded New York even though they called it New Amsterdam. The real problem is Genesis 26, where it says Isaac dealt with actual Philistines, including their king Abimelech, signifying the authors thought there were actual Philistines in the land, instead of it just referring to the land that would later be inhabited by the Philistines. As far as we can tell from archaeology, there were no people we have later identified as ethnic Philistines in the land of Canaan during the Middle Bronze Age. From what we can gather from DNA and archaeological evidence is that the Philistines didn't arrive in Canaan until the Bronze Age collapse, around 1200 BC, and they seem to have resembled an earlier Mycenaean culture. Egyptian records mention a coalition of people groups called the Sea Peoples that attacked Egypt and they were repelled. One of the groups of the Sea Peoples sounds very similar to the Philistines, and so many scholars think the Philistines were one of the groups of the Sea Peoples. After being repelled by the Egyptians, they settled along the coast in Canaan, or as the Bible refers to it, as the land of the Philistines. The prior homeland of the Philistines is debated. However, most believe it was somewhere around the Aegean Sea, which aligns with the biblical texts. Biblical authors say a group of Philistines came from Kaftor, and this tends to be associated with the Aegean area. Some have suggested that Kaftor is the island of Crete, the homeland of the Minoans. But there are problems with identifying Kaftor with Crete. Egyptian texts seem to disassociate Crete with their word for Kaftor. A more likely explanation is Kaftor, at least in the biblical texts, probably just refers to a general region of the Aegean world, not a specific island or a section of the coast. And likewise, the word Philistine in the biblical text is probably also just a general word that refers to anyone from the Aegean or inland Greek region. Just like if we lived in Israel, we could generalize and refer to anyone coming from that region as invading Europeans. You can see this throughout the Bible. In Deuteronomy 2, it says Kaphtorim came and destroyed the local inhabitants of Gaza and settled in their place. However, soon after in Joshua 13, the city is identified as a city of the Philistines. So this suggests the Kaphtorim could be a type of Philistine. 2 Samuel 15 identifies Cherethites, Pelethites, and Gittites as coming from Gath, which is also called a Philistine city. Zephaniah 2 and Ezekiel 25 seem to equate Philistines with Cherethites, which might refer to Cretans. Philistine, at least in the biblical text, appears to be a blanket term for anyone from the Aegean world, not a specific ethnicity, similar to how the term Canaanite or Amorite worked. So just because we can identify a distinct ethnic group as the Philistines, this doesn't mean this is what the term meant in the biblical text. The evidence suggests it was a blanket term for various people groups from the Aegean or Greek region or someone that may have been affiliated with Mycenaean culture. So just because Genesis 26 refers to Philistines and Canaan, in the biblical sense, that probably doesn't refer to the later sea people that arrived around 1200 BC. The authors are probably just using the term Philistine as a blanket term for people in Canaan from the Aegean and Greek region. A similar idea is probably behind the word Aramean. And there is some evidence for Bronze Age references to Arameans, 
Richard Hess says, Arameans in inland Syria appear to have been mentioned in Egyptian sources as early as the beginning of the 14th century BCE. Further, the equation of the Alamu and Arameans moves attestations of this tribal group back to the Mari period. The Arameans may illustrate the identification of an early group of people by a name commonly associated with a later group of people from the same area or otherwise associated with them. We find another illustration of this phenomenon with the appearance of Philistines in Genesis. This is no different than what we as modern people do with ethnic groups. We identify the people of this region as Greeks, even though they were not called this until the Roman era. Yet there is nothing wrong today with calling the ancient Athenians or Spartans Greek, even though they identify themselves as Hellens. We call the people of this region Mesopotamians, even though Mesopotamia was a Greek term applied to the area. No one from ancient Sumer called themselves a Mesopotamian. Historians can refer to the ancient Shang dynasty as Chinese, even though the term Chinese comes from the later Qin dynasty that conquered the region. Even Josephus at one point uses the term Jew to talk about Samaritans, even though at other times he seems to distinguish them as separate groups. So why is this exact same practice only a problem when it comes to the biblical text? Philistine and Aramean seem to just be blanket terms used to represent someone from a specific area, not a specific ethnicity from only one time period. In terms of archaeological evidence, we do have a wealth of data of an Aegean presence throughout Canaan in the Middle Bronze Age. Middle Bronze Age Hazor has evidence of Middle Minoan pottery. In Galilee, we have found a Middle Bronze Age palace that contains Cretan-style frescoes. Stephen Collins has reported evidence of Minoan artifacts at the biblical location of Sodom. Cypress-style pottery has been found at Megiddo and in the south at the location of Gerar, where the story of Genesis 26 takes place. At Gerar, we have also found Minoan-style graffito and other artifacts that resemble Minoan features. So the evidence suggests much more than the importing of goods, and that there was probably an Aegean presence available for the native Canaanites to hire or trade services with. Kenneth Kitchen concludes, Thus it is conceivable that Abimelech and his retainers, especially Fickle, may also once have been Kaftorians, or even Carathites, before Philistines later became a blanket term for non-Canaanite Aegean people in that part of southwest Canaan. Also, this is not to say there was a massive presence of Philistines yet, like what happened later during the days of Saul and David, only that it is likely there were earlier groups of Aegeans who were in the region to trade goods and services with the native Canaanites. And the biblical authors seem aware of this Aegean and Greek presence and simply blanket them all as Philistines, like how we can blanket the ancient people of the Shang dynasty as Chinese even before the existence of the Qin Dynasty. Genesis 26 is only an error if we don't use the biblical definition of the word Philistine. Last, with regards to Genesis 26, some argue this passage of Isaac making a treaty with Abimelech is too similar to an Abraham made one. So it's likely a mythic tale that was applied to both Isaac and Abraham and then both were inserted into Genesis. Kenneth Kitchen responds by noting that Abimelech of Gerar should have successive treaties with Abraham and Isaac is no more a doublet than Tommy Sharuma of Aleppo having successive treaties with two Hittite kings, Mursil II and Muwatalis II, first summarized in the second, or than Karanta kings of Tarkhan Hassa having successive treaties with no fewer than three Hittite kings. There are no doublets or triplets here, and none need be found in the Genesis examples either except on flawed a priori theory. Finally, we need to discuss the mention of Philistines in the Table of Nations. D.J. Wiseman and D.I. Block have argued it represents a Bronze Age survey of nations, based on early indicators within the passage. However, many argue it should not contain the Philistines, since they do not appear until later. But as we've already noted, the biblical use of the word Philistine is used for a broad range of people from the Aegean and Greek regions. And the mention of Philistines in the Table of Nations 
seems to support this notion. As it notes a group of Philistines from Kasluhim instead of Kaftor, which might indicate a different earlier group of Philistines before the second arrival of Philistines from Kaftor. Bloch says, The difficulty may be resolved by positing a series of successive waves of sea peoples who moved in from the Mediterranean and settled in Palestine. The first of these, the Pelasgo Philistines, may have inhabited the Negev prior to the arrival of the patriarchs. A later wave may have come directly from Kaftor, but their origin could well have been elsewhere. On the other hand, ethnic terms were not always used precisely, and the Kaptorum and Kaslehim may have been closely associated, perhaps the names were even used interchangeably. So the Philistines within the Table of Nations may very well have been a distinct group from later Philistines that arrived with the Sea Peoples, given they are distinguished by having a different origin. On top of that, we have some Bronze Age evidence of people that appear very similar to how the later Philistines were depicted in Egypt. On the island of Crete, an artifact was found known as the Feistoff's Disc. The language on it, called Linear A, has not been deciphered yet, so we have to be cautious with using this artifact. However, the disc most likely dates to the Middle Bronze Age, around 1700 BC, and it does appear to have a symbol of a man with a feathered headdress, which is similar to how the Egyptians depicted the later group associated with the Philistines. Other similar depictions have been found on Crete, and seem to indicate the Philistines, in the general sense, already existed and were known, which the later specific Philistines of the Sea People descended from. So in conclusion, we cannot judge the Bible by our definition of the word Philistine. The biblical authors seem fine blanketing several people groups from a general region as Philistines, just like how they call several people groups Amorites or Canaanites. Thus, given the definition of Philistines, Genesis is not an error when it says there were Philistines and Canaan during the Middle Bronze Age too. The evidence indicates they were just speaking of people from the region of Greece and the Aegean, and we have plenty of evidence of various people groups from those areas having a presence in Canaan during the days of Isaac. Mm -hmm.